atheism is one of the dumbest religions in the history of humanity. I think if somebody chooses to believe that, that's perfectly fine. I don't care what they believe, but they should stop calling it science. Hello, Doctor. Nice to see you and thank you for accepting the invitation. Well, thank you, sir. First question is this. Tell us about your ministry and vision. Well, the, the Bible says very clearly that God made everything in six days. Everything. And the textbooks in school teach the kids the earth is billions of years old and dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. And somebody's dead wrong about those facts. And so our ministry is to strengthen people's faith that the Bible is indeed the word of God. This is exactly where God preserved his words. Um, and so I think the scientific evidence points clearly to uh, what we call a young earth, but 6,000 is not young. 6,000 is pretty old. Uh, <clears throat> so that's uh, our ministry is to teach the scientific evidence that uh, <clears throat> the Bible is true. <clears throat> that means dinosaurs had to live with man. Uh, they called them a different name, called them dragons. And the word dinosaur was just made up 200 years ago. So we, uh, we teach the scientific evidence that the earth is uh, created in six days, about 6,000 years ago. And that means God owns it, and he makes the rules as far as, you know, the Ten Commandments and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be uh, judged by those rules. So we need to get ready for that judgment day. We believe uh, everybody will face God and with our sin. And if you don't have Jesus Christ and his death on the cross to pay for your sins, then you're going to be in serious trouble. So. 52 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me. Would you please pay for my sin? And his, his blood was put onto my account. And so I am forgiven. And I'm going to heaven, and it's not at all because I'm good. It's because of his mercy that he saved us. And I want to serve him the rest of my life. Yeah, nice. Praise God for that. And uh, so since you're a Christian, so what made you believe in Jesus? I mean, why are you Christians? Well, I was raised in America, and many people here believe in you know, Christianity and some for it, but there's two different kinds of believing. <clears throat> some people believe in their head, but they don't believe in their heart. Uh, the Bible says, with the heart, the man believeth unto salvation. So <clears throat> I guess that day when I was 16, I'd always known the story that Jesus died on the cross. I guess it never dawned on me that that, that had to be done for me. And I had to accept it. If you burned your neighbor's house down, and they came and said, hey, we're kind of upset. You burned our house down. You owe us, you know, $50,000 or something like that. <clears throat> and our ruples, whatever you use over there. You didn't have the money. And the policeman said, well, if you don't pay the money, you're going to, you're going to prison. And a rich guy came along and said, look, I don't want you to go to prison here. I'll pay the money for you to keep you out of prison. And so they, uh, standing there holding $50,000, <clears> you have a choice now to accept their payment or uh, reject it. If you reject their payment, you're going to prison. If you accept their payment, you're, you're off the hook. They don't care where the money comes from. They just want the money. And so God, uh, in his justice, has to say, one sin deserves the death penalty. So it doesn't have to be you that pays it. It could be somebody else. <clears throat> but the only one capable of paying your sin for you would be Jesus Christ, who was sinless. I can't pay for your sin. I can't even pay for my own. So that's uh, <clears throat> uh, the death penalty for any, any sin is, uh, is required. So 52 years ago, I prayed and said, Lord, I believe you died for me. Would you please forgive me and save me? Uh, so I'm going to heaven. It's a free gift. Nothing to brag about. It wasn't me. It was him that did it. <clears throat> nice. nice. Praise God for that. Uh, I hear your messages, your sermons, and your seminars on evolution, creation. So I have watched many of the videos of yours. So I just want to, uh, just I want you to just give a brief uh, views on how evolution is wrong. On how what is? How evolution is wrong. <clears throat> well, whenever you discuss <clears throat> the topic of evolution, you have to define exactly what you're talking about because that word is kind of slippery. There are six different meanings to the word. Uh, <clears throat> there is, <clears throat> I apologize here. 
there's what we often call microevolution, where that is changes within the same kind. There are now 195 varieties of dogs that are recognized by the dog kennel producers, you know. 195 varieties of dogs from the little Chihuahua to the Great Dane. They're all still recognizable as dogs. Nobody argues about that. And everybody would agree, I believe, that they all came from a common ancestor called a dog. So that is what we call microevolution. It's a variation within the very same kind of animal. Farmers have selectively bred goats over the years to get goats that give more milk. Some goats give more meat. Some goats can handle colder climate or higher altitude. They've now discovered they've selectively bred 210 different varieties of goats. They probably had a common ancestor called a goat. That is not evolution. That is microevolution or simple variation within the same kind. It's still a goat. So the evolutionist will look at that and say, wow, look at all these dog varieties, all these goat varieties. That proves goats and dogs are related. No, it does not. That's where it stops. The science shows us <clears throat> dogs can produce a variety of dogs and goats can produce a variety of goats. That's science. To think it goes beyond that is religion. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog or a goat produce a non-goat. It's never been observed. It's not part of science. Science deals with things we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. Now, they can believe, capital B, believe, that goats and bananas are related. And they do. Evolutionists believe. Goats and bananas have a common ancestor. I said, that's fine. I don't care what you believe. But it's not science. Don't call it science. And don't make our kids learn that in school like it's part of science because it's not. I think it's nonsense. But they, they're welcome to believe it. I don't care what religion they have. But they should admit that evolution is a religion. It is not a scientific belief at all. It's something that people have chosen deliberately to believe in in spite of the complete lack of evidence for it. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog, period or a goat produce a non-goat. So I contend that the evolution theory is actually a religion, depending what you mean by the word. And I do a lot of debates and I'm careful to define it first. Microevolution is perfectly fine. I, th I don't think we should call it that. I think we should call it something else to avoid confusion, like call it variation within the kind. Well, that certainly happens. You probably look different than your parents and your children look different than you. Okay, you're still human. That's not evolution. It's a variation of, of the same kind. And the Bible says clearly 10 times in the first chapter and 10 more times in the flood story. So 20 times in the first seven chapters of the Bible, it says the animals and plants will bring forth after their kind. And that's all anybody's ever seen. There are now a thousand varieties of apple trees that have been selectively bred by farmers. Some of the apples can handle the cold climate better. Some taste sweeter and some grow bigger. I don't know, more juice or whatever they're trying to do. But there's a thousand varieties of apples now and they might have had a common ancestor called an apple. That is not evolution. They go further than just macro evolution, though, saying that dogs and apples are related. They want you to believe in cosmic evolution, that everything was created by nothing exploding. The Big Bang, where nothing exploded and made everything. Now that is real stupid. So I cover in my videos I do on drdino.com. People can watch all my videos. I don't know if we have them in any of the Indian languages or not. People have helped me translate them into 42 different languages. There are some Indian languages? I believe so. You can check our website, drdino.com, if you want to look at that. But we just, we just want to get the truth out that God created everything, and we're going to stand before this God one day and be judged. And I want everybody to be ready for that. If you have to stand before God with your own sin, you're going to be in real trouble. But Jesus Christ paid for mine, so mine's forgiven. Okay, not because of me, <laughs> because of him. Okay. Yeah, great. So, uh, so what are your thoughts on atheism and human predicament? On baptism, is that your question? No. Your thought. What are your thoughts on atheism? Oh, atheism. I think atheism. You're muted, sir. You're got me. Is a you would have to believe that there's no God. No possible way you could know such a thing. It's only something you could believe. So atheism is a, is a pure religion. And <clears throat> it is, I think it's silly. <clears throat> they claim that it's science. There's nothing scientific about that. You can't possibly know that. You can believe that is all. So that's why I say atheism is one of the dumbest religions in the history of humanity. 
I think if somebody chooses to believe that, that's perfectly fine. I don't care what they believe, but they should stop calling it science. And they certainly should stop making all of us pay to have that taught in the schools like it's part of science because it's not part of science. It's pure nonsense. Yeah. Great. So what advice would you give to, you know, Christian youth in today's time where information <coughs> knowledge is very accessible and through internet and they get influenced by other worldviews because they are so compelling. So what well, advice yeah, would you give? World, that's a magic word, your worldview. How do you view the world? Some people look at the world and say, nobody made it. It made itself. That's the atheist worldview. Well, <clears throat> if that is true, then I ask the atheists all the time. I've had 226 debates against atheists. I say, guys, if evolution is true, how do you tell right from wrong? Is it wrong to murder your neighbor? They'll say, yeah. I say, why? Why would that be wrong? If he has food and I need food, why not go kill him and take his food? Isn't that what happens in the wild animal kingdom? Why would it be? Is, is anything right or wrong? See, under the evolution religion, <clears throat> there's no such thing as right or wrong. They have no way of judging anything being right or wrong. It's, I think it's a dangerous religion, but it's also extremely stupid. It's just not, it's not common sense. Uh, so I, I say young people especially, they're going to have to face this. I think there's a much bigger war going on between God and Satan. Uh, I've never seen either one, but I think that's the evidence shows that there's a big war going on between those two. And Satan knows someday he's going to be doomed to hell, and he wants to take as many people with him as possible. And so <clears throat> I don't know why he would do that, but we see in the book of Revelation where God tells about the future that uh, when Satan is cast into the pit uh, so that the Christians can rule on the earth for a thousand years, at the end of the thousand years, he hasn't learned a single thing. When God lets him out, he comes right back out tries to deceive the nations again. And people are going to fall for it. There are some people who really like the idea of not having God tell them what to do. They don't like his rules for some reason, whatever that is. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I think this cre creation versus evolution is the central conflict in the world today. I don't know of anything more important that needs to be discussed and, and settled and rationalized. Because you, you simply cannot tell right from wrong. You have no sense of a moral standard unless you decide... Where do rights come from? If rights, one guy, I was debating an atheist one time, <clears throat> and I asked him the question, how do you tell right from wrong? He said, well, that's very simple. He said, I decide what's right or wrong. I said, that's great, because I'm going to come shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, yeah, I can. I decide what's right or wrong in my world, and I decided I need to shoot you and take your stuff. What's wrong with that logic? <laughs> if evolution is true, that's perfectly fair logic. They have no way of determining an absolute standard, a thus saith the Lord. They don't have that. Well, I do. So I, I can tell right from wrong based on what God told me is right or wrong. And uh, so do you think apologetics is required in today's time? If yes, then tell us your experience of uh, debating with the non-believers and these scientists and how it has been. Was it difficult and how much it is required in today's time? Well, I think it's critical that a Christian be able to defend what they believe and why. For example, the Bible, if you go through the Bible, you'll notice right away there's a bunch of dates in there. It says Adam was 130 when Seth was born. And then it says later Seth, his son, was 105 when his son was born. So being a mathematician, I said, hey, add up the numbers. If you go through the Bible and add up all those numbers that are given, the Bible clearly teaches that Adam was created about 6,000 years ago, <clears throat> 4,000 BC. So you don't need to apologize for that. That's what it says. The earth is about 6,000 years old. When you look at the science, <clears throat> you say, wait a minute, the sun is up there right now and it's burning. The sun is burning and losing about 5 million tons of fuel every second. The sun is really burning a lot of fuel to keep us warm 93 million miles away. All right. Well, what if you added what if you added that weight, 5 million tons per second, back to the sun and went backwards in time? How far back in time could you go <clears throat> adding 5 million tons a second before you start to create a problem because the sun becomes so massive that the gravity has changed and it starts to suck all the planets in? 
Well, it turns out you can only go back a few million years and everything gets sucked in. The gravity of the sun is too strong. So here they are telling me that the earth is billions of years old. I say, guys, wait a minute. The sun is losing 5 million tons of fuel per second. It can't be billions of years old. None of the planets could be here. And then you go, when they measure the size of the sun, they notice the sun is shrinking. Over the last 200 years, they've measured the sun's diameter pretty carefully and kept charts of it. And the sun is shrinking about five feet every hour. <clears throat> All right, well, if you run the clock backwards, you can't go back billions of years because the sun would be so big, it would be touching Earth's orbit. It just is not possible. You can look at the moon, for instance. The moon goes around the Earth, but the moon is getting farther away from the Earth. We're losing the moon couple inches a year. Okay, well, if you run the clock backwards, the moon was closer. If the moon were closer, you got two problems. Number one, the tides would be higher, washing away the beaches. Two, the gravity would become stronger, sucking the moon in. At about one billion years ago, one billion, the moon-Earth orbit would collapse. They would snap together like two magnets. So why are we telling the kids the Earth is 4.6 billion years old? Just the moon says less than one billion. Uh, the sun, probably a few hundred million max. So I go through my seminar on drdino.com, D-R-D-I-N-O.com, my seminar part one. I go through about 30 or 40 different ways to show the earth cannot be billions of years old. I'm sorry. If you need billions of years for your theory, I'm sorry. Get a new theory because you can't have billions of years. They need a new pacifier. Go ahead. Yeah, great. Thank you, sir. 